talks about as, as some amazing surf luminaries, including Randy Rarick, who's here this evening. And without his help, I would not have had this film and Gidget yesterday. So it takes a village to do this surf film festival. And she called me up and she said, can you help me get a couple films? I said, sure, we can help you out. And I, I recommended uh, the Gidget film. I recommended uh, Going Vertical. We got the uh, Eddie film for her. But Bob wanted to say a few words about the production of the film. Yeah. Max is here. <laughs> Max introduced me to Robert Raymond at the pass. You remember the pass in, in Byron Bay? And this Hollywood swagger guy, you know, he comes up and goes, hey, Max, I'd like to do a story about your stowaway one day. Well, he did it, and Rob Raymond hired a guy called Larry Keating, who was a really great documentary uh, guy, producer from, from uh, New Zealand. Now, Larry shot 130 hours of footage. He spent all two days with Greg and Laura up in Crescent City. He spent an entire day, Randy put together a day with George Downing, an entire day with George, pulling out Peppy and Pinky and all the old boards. And you know what? This about 10 seconds of it in the home. Because when it comes, to, because Larry got cancer and Larry dropped off the job. So the whole thing got suspended for like 18 months and it was just lying there, 130 hours of footage. And it was pretty sad. But Rob Raymond just powered through and he finally got the film finished with a new director, a very famous Australian director who's been an Academy Award nominated and he cut it to a story that made sense to the audience. So, poor George Downing didn't appear. Greg's two days of shooting, we get like two minutes of Greg. So there's a lot of sadness that a lot of, a lot of babies were killed, but it's still a good film. So please enjoy going vertical, and afterwards Dick and I are going to have an arm wrestle up here. <laughs> Once again, I want to thank uh, Gina Caruso and the uh, Doris Duke Theater for making this possible. Okay, so I'd like to have uh, Greg Knoll come on up. Greg, if you don't mind sucking up here. I'd also like to get uh, Jock Seller and Jock, if you could come on up. Now, let's get Dick Brewer to join us up here. Come on up, Greg. Well, Greg, when are you going to take a drop of pipeline? I have a totally new respect for this guy. <laughs> that was a bitchin' film, I thought. Thank God for Dick Brewer and this guy for keeping the conversation going forever and ever. I never thought I'd see that happen. In fact, Dick and I have had our little share of uh, disagreements over the years. Besides of all the bullshit about who did this and who did that, one thing we ought to probably all remember is the sport of surfing goes back to the ancient Hawaiians and thank them for the gift of surfing to the world. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think I was a bit egotistical in the movie. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> what I think it was, Dick, was frustration. You know, you hadn't had a chance to say your bits, and then when you finally got the camera, you just let it fly. <laughs> See, Jock here. Jock was the, I think he was the best surfer in maybe the world. I think mostly it was because of the, the equipment. Bob, thank you for, for the compliment, though. But what I got to say is, the guys that came out to the North Shore in the 50s, uh, uh, the Buffalo and Henry Priest showed hospitality for it. These guys, the pioneers that took me under their wing, like Dick, and, and gave me the equipment, showed me the place to line up. That made it easy. That and, and you guys coming over going, hey, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> that was the greatest surf in the world at the time, but no, I think Jock was just a little bit. Uh, when we brought our boards down there in 1956 and we got off the plane, they put them on the back of the flatbed, you know, the, the Malibu style, uh, they weren't short boards, but they were just, you know, the regular uh, Malibu style board. They'd never seen these boards before. And the hot shit guy from uh, Surfer uh, came up and he jumped up on the back of the flatbed and he looked at him, looked down one rail, looked down the other rail, spit on the ground and said, two bob for the works. <laughs> When they changed their tune after they saw those boards working, and I just I appreciate what they did with those boards, taking them forward and doing what Dick Brewer and Bob McTavish have done, and 
God knows what it's going to be like in another hundred years. What was going on with those old dogs, you know? Uh, <laughs> look what it's come to now. So, who knows? You know, in Australia, it's, um, it's not folklore, it's written history that when Greg and Tom Zahn and Mike Bright, he's six, like Mexican up there, he was there. Anyone else witness that event? Anyone? Well, it, it changed surfing forever in Australia. First time when they came to Avalon, in '56, on their boards, yeah. when they went in front of the rocks, and everybody Australian was going, "These guys are mad! They're going to go on the rocks." Yeah. And when the guy went down the wave and went across the wave, everybody just went, "Oh, this what's about?" This. <laughs> and then everybody wanted the board. Yeah. Where did you get them? What you got to realize, and you'll, you'll see it down at the surf auction, we had the wood boards, the planks, then the hollow boards, and then we finally got to the balsa boards. And there's guys like Joe Quigg. Joe Quigg made the first short board back in the early 50s and introduced the Malibu chip type of board. So Joe Quigg made it possible for Greg then to design boards that they took to Australia in 1956. And of course, you know, it's a history after that, as Greg said, it changed everything. So. What you got to realize is we keep, surfing keeps moving forward. The, these different airs and the people that made this possible, and for those of you that are going to come down to the auction, that's what's so neat about it. You're going to see boards that Greg designed. Greg's 1956 paddle board that he took on that trip is at the auction. Can you believe that? And, and we've, got, we've got Bob's uh, boards that he designed. We, you saw Bob Cooper talking about when he went to California. The first board that Bob shaped in the Yader factories there. And Dick, of course, we've got a pipeliner there that Dick made. Dick Brewer guns, surfboards, Hawaii guns. I mean, it's amazing what these guys have done. So I want to thank all of you guys for making it possible for where we're at today. Randy, you make it possible. Here's some questions Thanks. so these guys can answer it for you. So let's get a question from somebody out there. So exactly what I was uh, uh, adhering to. We went all those different changes as we went through the 40s into the 50s. That's it. Um, Quig, once again, he's the first guy that used foam. Quig went to work with Simmons. Uh, Matt Kivlin and Quig shaped all the Simmons sandwich boards with that foam inside and the plywood decks and the, and the uh, balsa rails. So Bob Simmons helped design that and out of the Simmons came, uh, as I said, Quig uh, and Kivlin de developed the Malibu ship, which is what, what Greg took to Australia. And the Buzzy Trent model, uh, Buzzy Trent had a Simmons that, that he wrote it, uh, in California and he kept telling me Brewer concaves. So I made the concave Buzzy Trent gun. Now we're all riding concave <coughs> in one form or another. That was a radical concave. That thing had a scoop in the back of it. That was wild. Yeah. Does he have a book for Tavish? Yeah, actually, um, as soon as we're finished with the Q&A, for those of you, Bob's come out with a great book, uh, and he brought up a couple dozen with him from Australia. Out the back, Bob will be signing that for you, for those of you like the purses. Bob, uh, tell us a little bit about your book there. Um, I started writing the stories like 20 years ago and I, by the time I got to that 1968 I'd run out of, like from nine, when I started something in 56 to 68 I had, well, I had 400 pages of stories and I just went oh, that's enough <laughs> and so I got a friend who printed and we sold 10,000 copies in Australia wow. and so now this is the first time I brought them to the Hawaii. <coughs> yeah so you can get a chance for Bob and then tomorrow Greg and we have uh, Anna Trent Morris here, and we have uh, eight other authors will be at the, at the uh, auction, and it costs nothing to get in there and come in. They all have books, and Greg's going to have the art of a surfboard, and is your other ones with you. And so come down to the auction tomorrow from 12 noon to 4. There'll be uh, other 10 authors on offer there, sign it log, and Bob will be down there as well. I want to ask Dick Brewer a question. <laughs> 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 Did you have it? got into surfing then, what would you have designed in an aircraft, Dick? <laughs> um, you know, my model airplane said under camber wings, I was totally into concave wings, uh, symmetrical airfoils when I was 16 years old, and it, those airplanes would still be competitive in, in, uh, to this day in, in model airplane design. It's called Boeing tomorrow. <laughs>